Hey, butterflies, it's your girl, Pam. I am really, really hoarse. Not sure why. Um, feeling fine. It's just my voice is going out. So not sure what it's about. But um, today I wanted to come and tell you guys my cancer story, how I found out the process um, that I went through. Um, and like I said, this is to kind of... Um, chronicle because it's so much being hit at you at one time thrown at you at one time I guess and so um, this is for me to chronicle all of this but at the same time um, when you first find out you have nobody to turn to you don't know what to go through you don't know where you're headed it's uncharted territory so kind of wanted to maybe help some other people um, as they're getting diagnosed and maybe um, it will give them a, a little sense of comfort knowing that, um, you know, they're not the only one. So, um, as I've said before, um, immediately when I got diagnosed, I knew that I had a mission. Um, I have been very honest. I have not been a person that has um, necessarily done their monthly um, breast exams, self exams um, consistently. Um, however, I have been consistent about going to get my mammograms um, since the age of 40. I am now 53. I will be 54 in May. So um, for that long, I've gone. Uh, I may be a couple of months off, but normally I go August, September, somewhere in there. And um, this particular year, um, 2021, um, I struggled because um, of what was going on in the world and I just didn't want to be exposed. And so I had gone the previous year. It had gone okay. So... But I was like, okay, it's to almost toward the end of the benefit year. Let me just wait till next year. It's fine. And something kept saying, no, go ahead. You've been consistent. Let's, you know, just go ahead and go. Well, the Friday before that, I ended up taking the vaccine. So I thought that, well, actually, I didn't put two and two together at that particular time, honestly. Um, I took the vaccine on the 26th of November and then went and had my mammogram scheduled for the 3rd of December. Um, that was the following Friday after I took the vaccine. Normally, I feel like go in, do it. I know that I'm going to get a letter. This particular time, I knew that I wasn't. Like, as soon as I walked out the building, I knew I was not going to get that letter. Hey, your boobies are okay. We'll see you next year. I knew it. Um, honestly, the first thing that came through my mind, the tech was talking too much and she messed up and they're going to have to rescan. That was the first thing. So <clears throat> I kind of had my mind already set that I was going to have to go back. I didn't realize they were going to um, send over the information in my chart that evening saying that they needed to go ahead and schedule a diagnostic. My PCP called me immediately that evening and said, hey, I'll go ahead and set up the referral, go back and do the diagnostic mammogram. I said, okay. So one young lady called to schedule the diagnostic. And then another lady called and said, hey, we need to schedule you an ultrasound. I was like, well, wait a minute. They just scheduled me the diagnostic. What's going on? I then I'm kind of getting a little scared. And so she was like, oh, no, you know, we can't get them on the same day and we need to do both. I was like, OK. Then they called back and said, no, if we need the ultrasound, then we'll go ahead and do it right after the diagnostic. I said, OK. So I go in for the diagnostic, you know, it's a little bit more pressure, a little bit more different positions. Okay, not a problem. Uh, and I'm a little chest heavy. So I do um, understand that when you have smaller boobies, 
um, it it tends to stretch and pull and hurt a little bit more. Well, me, I just flop them dokos up there and keep it moving. So it doesn't hurt me. It's 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 uncomfortable, but it doesn't hurt. So the lady said, "Okay, I'm gonna take this over to the radiologist. Um, we'll let you know if you know. Go sit in the waiting room. We'll let you know if you have to do an ultrasound." So I said, "Okay." So I'm waiting. And she comes over and she says, yeah, you're going to have to go do an ultrasound. And I'm like, is she kidding me? Like, okay, the joke's over now. I'm like, I'm over it. So I'm sitting there and the ultrasound tech comes out and she calls my name. And honestly, I sat there like I, it was only two people in there, me and another lady. And she was older, much older than I was. And I was like, well, if she don't answer, I'm not going to answer either. <laughs> And I was like, she was like, Miss Fields, Pam. I was like, so finally she was like, is it you? I was like, okay. So I went on back and I saw the mask as soon as she put the ultrasound on there. Um, I was like, okay. Then she got out her measuring tape. It's like, yeah, this this can't be good. So she was like, um, I'm going to take these to the radiologist, see if she needs any other, you know, positions or whatever, films, whatever. Then she comes back with the radiologist. And I was like, okay. So prior to that, one of my friends said, hey, I've heard that, you know, sometimes, um, the swelling from the vaccine may cause, you know, things to look different, whatever. So you might want to mention that to them. And sure enough, they had it on the machine and everything. Let us know if you had it. So she comes in. She said, yeah, I think we, you know, we probably need to biopsy this. And I'm like, yeah, no, let's let's not do that. I said, you know, I, you know let me tell you my theory and you can just kind of tell me if I'm on to something. I said, you know, the original one I ended up, the original um, mammogram I, the week before I had the vaccine and I heard that, you know, it might have been able to cause some swelling or whatever. And she said, no, you're right. Any kind of vaccine you take, flu or anything, it can make, you know, some swelling um, in your tissue area, your lymph nodes. But that is not where yours is. <laughs> I was like, oh God, no. So, of course... I'm like, okay, we got to do what we got to do. So I'm trying to debate whether or not to tell my kids. And it's almost Christmas. And, you know, it's just, it's like, you know, do you ruin Christmas and or you keep it to yourself? And so I'm just, oh, it's a mess. So they scheduled um, my biopsy on the 30th of June. No, excuse me, the 30th of June, 30th of December because we were trying to get it in before, you know, the end of the benefit years and I had already met my deductible. So I'm already nervous. I already have anxiety. Um, think about it. Needle and breast, they don't go together. They just don't. And so I was like, okay, this is not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So I said, okay, so what do I do now? Well, I said, watched a couple of videos on YouTube. Um, and one of the ladies was just really, really sweet. And she was like, look, the anxiety of having the biopsy is worse than the actual biopsy. It's numb, you know. So I said, okay. So it's the 30th of December. My appointment is at 8 it's 7.15. They call and tell me that the ultrasound tech is sick and that they would have to reschedule. So, of course, I felt like the air had just been popped out of my balloon. But then the lady was like, look, if she's sick, you do not want her standing over you. Just, you know, I'll call you back. We will we'll reschedule. 
Well, ironically enough, they rescheduled on my mommy's birthday. Happy heavenly birthday, mommy, Jan uh, January 5th. And um, went in. The lady was right. The anxiety of it was much worse. Um, the only way, and I think I've in one of my other videos talking about a biopsy, um, the, I guess, going in, it, you know, it's numb, so that didn't hurt. Um, if anything would have alarmed me, it would have been them trying to extract the tissue. And only because it sounded like those old staplers, for you that are older <laughs> in age, they, the teachers used to have a stapler on the desk and it wasn't anything that you were going to move, but you would put your paper under it and then you would smack the top of it and it would make this loud noise. And that's exactly what it sounded like, right? So they had to extract, I think, four, dis four different pieces of tissue and then they put a uh, titanium um, clip in so that if I do a mammogram any other time, they would know that, hey, this has already been biopsy, okay? If something came up on, like, you know, another concern. So, finished the biopsy. That was on the 5th. And then on the 7th of January, my life changed forever. Um, My doctor, my PCP called, and she said, are you home? I said, yes. And she said, are you sitting down? And I said, yes. And she said, you do have breast cancer. So, um, I heard her, didn't hear her. Wasn't sure that I wanted to hear her. but knew that I don't have time to sit and worry about this. What What's next? What do we do next? So she gave me the number of a surgeon and an oncologist. I immediately called. It was probably about 3.30 and called the oncologist first. She couldn't get me scheduled until the 21st. This is the seventh. That's a long time. Um, but the lady was sweet as she could be. She was like, look, we'll get through this. Just, you know, it's fine. Um, called the surgeon because she told me to call the surgeon. Maybe they could get me in sooner to get me some, you know, answers. They were. They were able to get me on in on the 13th. Um, and... You know, I was able to look at my chart and it said, you know, um, invasive um, ductal car carcinoma. So I'm, of course, looking that up, right? And then it says grade three. Okay. What does, you know, I, we as a lay person, we only know stages, you know, so our grade and stage, are they interchangeable? What, you know, what is going on? And so I knew the higher the number of the stage, the worse that it was. So I was, you know, I needed to know what this grade was, which it just means that it's a lot more aggressive. So I was like, okay, um, what do I do now? So went to the, um, Went to the surgeon on the 13th. That's when she told me I was stage two. But her concern was that the place that they found and biopsied is not the normal place that they start, that a breast cancer starts. Normally it starts in the, the uh, milk duct area and mine was in the lymph nodes is where they found it. So their concern was, is that wasn't the originating place. So is it flicking, which means that's why it's a grade three. 
So she explains to me, you know, what there is a difference between the grade and the, you know, the stage and, um, you know, uh, what she thinks probably is going to happen as far as me having to have a mastectomy versus a lumpectomy. So I, and literally I had to record it because there was so much stuff coming at me at one time. I didn't know what to do. Um, so then after the surgeon, we go see the oncologist um, everybody was really, really nice, thorough. They answered my questions. And then she started talking about the chemo. Yeah. So all the research I had done, I was supposed to be going once every three weeks, um, for 12 weeks. And that was supposed to be it. Well, not Pammy. Not pay me. So, you know, I have to have my notes because I, you know, all of this stuff is still new to me. But um, so she proceeds to give me. Let me show you. all This is hilarious. This sheet here is my breakdown. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. So she said that I would start doing. um carboplantin um, and taxol for 12 weeks going once a week. I was like, once a, what? <laughs> once a week? Because everything I heard, it was like once every three weeks. So I was through. And then I would have to have the Keytruda once every three weeks. So every, even though I'm going once every three, then on the third week, I would always have the Keytruda. So then... After that, I would start the AC and, um, yeah, wasn't looking forward to that one either. So I have to have four cycles of that in a 12 week cycle. Then she said, after four to six weeks, we would do the surgery. Then after the surgery, about a month after the surgery, we would begin radiation. So I would have to do the Keytruda through the whole 24 weeks. Um, and then, like I said, the um, textile and the carbo, um, carboplatin um, for the first 12 weeks and then the AC for the second 12 weeks. So it, I was like, wait a minute, that's half of a year of chemo. Like that's a long time. So I was like, okay. Um, then it was a whirlwind. So just to give it a little perspective financially, I have a $4,400 copay, excuse me, uh, deductible. That's the family one. From January 5th, when I had the ultrasound and the biopsy, to January 18th, I had already made my deductible for the entire year, the family deductible, in 13 days. So, um, is it expensive? Yes. Am I blessed to have insurance? Yes. Is this going to be a financial burden? Yes, <laughs> it is. Even with insurance, it is. Um, because of course the deductible, I had to pay that out of pocket regardless. So, and that's not including the co-insurance after, even though I've, you know, met, I still have a 20% that I have to pay. So, um, well, let's keep going. Um, on the 24th of January, I had my port put in. Um, they wanted to do another MR. It was not another MRI. They wanted to do an MRI to see where they thought the originating place was because they, the one that they had originally found, they didn't think that was it. Okay, so the original place that they biopsied, if you're, it's on my left breast, and it's at the 2 o'clock hour. 
the MRI came back that there were two other spots that they needed to biopsy. A 230 and then under um, where my lymph nodes were. So I'm like, okay. So we went back in on the, well, what happened? No, I started chemo on the 4th. And then on February 14th, where everybody else is getting flowers and candy, I'm getting my booby pooped and popped again. <laughs> poked and prodded again. Not once, but twice. So on the 14th of February, I had the second biopsy with multiple extractions. And um, the 2.30 that they saw was benign, but the other one was malignant, which was not a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. We kind of knew that already because it wasn't the originating place. So there you have it. Um, like I said, I had the biopsy about two weeks after I started chemo. Um, but they said that at that point it looked like it had reduced in size, which was a blessing. Um, so, uh, we're just, you know, thankful, like I said, that we're not having a lot of, um, side effects. I can say that exercising, I'm just doing like the little walking off the pounds or if my, um, Coworker can go walking during lunch or something. We do that. We meet up at the park and just go walking. But I try to get in some form of exercise um, on a daily basis just because it does make me feel a lot better if I do exercise. I usually honestly do about maybe 20 minutes, 25 at the most. But it, I, I really in the last week and a half haven't had any side effects. Um, well, other than this stuff coming out here, got a little peach fuzz, but it's almost out. I'm trying to debate, um, you know, luckily I have a good size shaped head. <laughs> you have to laugh about this stuff. I'm sorry. <sighs> luckily I have a decent size set head. Um, so I don't know if I'm just going to rock some big earrings. Um, but I did order some like satin caps just to, you know, I, I just, I don't want the pity. Um, yeah, I don't want the pity. I'm just being honest. I don't want it. Um, so anyway, there you have it. That is my story. That's kind of, you know, but tomorrow I'm going to number six. So, um, and that will be on March 11th. So today's March 10th, 2022. And I, guys, I am, I'm feeling pretty good. So like I said, I don't know why this raspiness is in my voice, but you know, it is what it is. I don't feel any bad, any worse or anything, but, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys and just kind of give you how quickly things change um, in a matter of seconds. Um, so you have to be thankful. You have to be have gratitude for the, you know, the, the portion that you're able to um, get through without, you know, feeling too sick or anything like that. It may not always be like that, but it is today and I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. And um, I'm on those days that aren't so good. I'm I'm gonna look back and say, you know what? Hey, March 10th, it was it. You felt pretty good. So, you know, take one for the team, and we'll keep it moving. So, um, but if you guys have any questions, if I can support anybody in any way, I do know that a a lot of people are being diagnosed. The bottom line is, it's one in eight people. If you got ten people in the room, somebody somewhere eight people in the room, somebody somewhere may have breast cancer. So please do your monthly exams. Um, please make sure that you do your annual mammograms. Um, 
don't be in denial. Go and check it out. Make sure it's okay. Um, also, if you um, know of anybody that this video will help, please share it with them. Make sure you should subscribe. Um, make sure you hit that like. And please leave me comments. Y'all know I love y'all's comments. I love interacting with you guys. Um, but I would love to have you a part of the family. Um, I do appreciate everybody that hits that subscribe button because, you know, you're helping the channel out. Um, you know, I'm not making any money on this at all. This is literally the chronicle of my life. Um, and to hopefully help somebody if they're going through it. But um, the intent is for information. The intent is for positivity. The intent is for knowing that you're going to get through this one way or the other and knowing that um, even though the day might look a little dark, you know, you can find a little bit of sunshine, you can smile, you can laugh, um, and you don't have to stay in that dark place. You don't. You can be able to walk through this with honor and grace and gratitude Um like I said, I knew what my mission was. Um, he had already told me. And so for me to see women screenshot their clearance letters that they, you know, were cleared from, you know, any um, abnormalities for this year. Um, or they inbox me and say, hey, I made my appointment or I went to my appointment today. That in itself brings me joy because... Um, that's one other person that's okay. They're safe, right? So um, I can't wait to talk to y'all again. Of course, I'll check in tomorrow, tell y'all how it went um, as far as the number six um, with chemo. And that'll make us halfway there, right? And um, so till next time, butterflies. Love you.